This is section 1.5, part A, parent functions and transformations. For part A, we're just going to be able to identify, graph, and describe parent functions. Later in part B, we'll be able to identify and graph transformations of the parent functions. So a parent function is just the simplest form of a function in a family of functions. Um, our first parent function is a constant function, which is just f of x is equal to c, where c is any real number. The zero function is just a constant function where your c value is zero. The identity function is a function of the form of f of x is equal to x. This is going to be a line that goes through the origin at zero, zero, and has a slope of one. The quadratic function is a function of the form f of x is equal to x squared. The cubic function is f of x is equal to x to the third power. The graph is going to be symmetric about the origin. And the square root function f of x is equal to the square root of x. It will start at 0, 0, and then we'll go up towards the right. The reciprocal function f of x is equal to 1 over x. The absolute value function, f of x is equal to absolute value of x. You can also think of this as a piecewise function where if we have negative, if x is less than 0, then you're going to use negative x. And if x is greater than or equal to 0, we use x. The last type is a step function. This is a piecewise function that defines a function in which each graph resembles a set of stairs. The greatest integer function is denoted with the um, brackets around the x. And this is the greatest integer less than or equal to x. So if we have negative 3.5 inside those brackets, the integer that is greater than, that is less than or equal to that one would be negative 4. And if we have 1.5 in there, the integer that is less than or equal to that would be 1. So if we go to our graph and look at that on the graph, negative 3.5, my x value would be right here. That is going to correspond with a y value of negative 4 because that is an integer that is less than or equal to the negative 3.5. So for each of these parent functions, we're going to describe the characteristics. We're going to describe the domain, range, intercepts, the symmetry, continuity, and behavior, and intervals on in which it's increasing or decreasing. So the first thing you need to do is have an idea of what the graph is going to look like. If you go back and look at your square root function, It is going to look like this. So the first thing we need to do is describe the domain and the range. The domain, if you look towards the left, it starts at the value of x is 0, and it's going to increase going to the right. So our domain starts at 0 because that is a closed circle. We have the bracket there, and it's going to the right forever, so that's to infinity. The range for this function, if we look, the y value, first y value is at 0, and then it goes up forever. So our range is going to go from 0 to positive infinity because it's going up forever. The next thing they ask for is the intercepts. We have an x and a y intercept, but they are at the same location. They are intercepting at 0, 0. So you have an x intercept of 0 and a y intercept of 0. If we look at this graph, we cannot fold it and have the same look the same if you hold across the x axis or the y axis. And if you pick it up and turn it, it still does not look the same. So there are no symmetries. Next, they ask about continuity. This function is continuous after it actually begins. So we say it is continuous for all values of the domain, because as long as it's inside that domain, it does work.
Next, we're going to talk about the end behavior. There is no end behavior on the left side because it starts at x is 0. So when we look at the left side, we're just going to say begins at x is 0. We do have an end behavior on the right side of the graph, and that's approaching positive infinity because it's on the right. And if we look at the right side, it's going up. So it's going to not approach a value, it's going to increase. So we're going to call that positive infinity. And the last part just says where it's increasing, decreasing, or continuous. And this whole function is increasing. So we are increasing from 0 to infinity.